Good morning. You're watching PA Harness Week. This is a show all about harness racing right here in Pennsylvania. We have everything from the biggest races to the big name horses, trainers, drivers. We have it all. I'm Charlotte McBride and I'm joined by Heather Vitale. I am looking so forward to this half hour of horsepower on four legs, of course, but what's not to love? We have a huge show, a lot of big races to get to. Here's what you can expect to see in this next half hour. One of the biggest days in the sport of harness racing took place this past Saturday, the Hamiltonian. We have complete coverage, plus we'll inspect the modern day racing bike. These babies are built for safety and speed, and an old friend of Heather's was back on the oval. It's a story you won't want to miss. Don't touch that dial. It's all next on PA Harness Week. The most famous trot race in harness racing, the Hamiltonian, stepped off from the Meadowlands last Saturday. One million dollars up for grabs. And a lot of these horses that we saw at the Hamiltonian we're also going to be seeing in the Breeders' Crown, which is, of course, this October at the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono. I know. It's exciting just thinking about it. But this is the way the Hamiltonian works. The horses have to race twice in one day. So before we see the final, we're going to take a look at the $100,000 eliminations that happened earlier on the card. Crystal Fashion and Tim Tietrick won the first handball limb in 1:15.1. The time was a world record for three-year-old gilding trotters. He nabbed the lone filly Atlanta at the wire. She settled for second, and Metz Hall was third. The second limb saw a tactical landing coming from behind to win in 1:52.1 with trainer Jimmy Tactor in the sulky. Patent Leather was second, and Fashion Woodchopper was third. Now the first five from each elimination advanced to the final, which is held on the very same day. Now the favorite in the final, Crystal Fashion. Driven by Tim Tietrick. Atlanta paves the way by two. Now looking to tighten in second is Fashion Wood Chopper with Dave Miller. The whip up on Metz Hall in that third position across the back stretch. Evaluate is fourth. And now Tactor gets tactical landing and gear uncovered fifth on the outside. And that's live cover for Crystal Fashion and Tietrick going up there on the outside. And into the flow is uh, alarm detector now third over and he gets in gear so a shuffle for classic chap near the rear of the field with Hattrick Habit on the outside and patent leather the half up in a rated 55 and 2 so 29 rating in that second quarter Atlanta in front here's Tactor with tactical landing on the outside to threaten as they head to three quarters fashion wood chopper locked in the box third crystal fashion needs to flip three wide right now as Atlanta opens up Atlanta getting some separation now on tactical landing on the outside. Fashion Woodchopper back on the inside. Three wide Crystal Fashion. Three quarters, 122 and four, 27 and two. And she's trying to give them the slip here. It is Atlanta, the Philly and Scott Saran trying to keep her going. Trying to track her down. Crystal Fashion Mets Hall on the outside. Tactical landing on the inside. Almost there, Atlanta. Scott Saran rocking, whipping, driving, and the Philly does it! Atlanta wins the $1 million Hamiltonian in wire-to-wire -wire fashion. Now, she tried to do that in the elimination, and she got nabbed. However, she was strong enough to beat the boys in 150 and 4. This is a really big deal because she's only the 14th filly in history to win the Hamiltonian and the first filly to do it in 22 years. She is trained by Rick Zeron, who's not only the conditioner, but also the dad of the driver, Scott Zeron. And we found out more about this incredible incredible race from Scott. This is as good as it's ever going to get, I think. You know, uh, the fact that I knew I wanted the wire helped a little bit more for this excitement and celebration, but uh, I, just, I felt like that a little bit of pressure because I was the one who wanted her in the Hamiltonian, and I felt she was good enough to beat the boys. And, uh, and I messed up in the elimination, but she's a champion. She bounced back for the final. Thank you so much to the USTA for that footage and that interview with Scott. Also, I want to mention that Mets Hall was second, Tactical Landing was third, and then the favorite Crystal Fashion was fourth. And now we have another huge race to get to. The Hamiltonian Oaks, a half million dollars up for grabs in this one, featuring three-year-old Philly Trotters. And the favorite, Thetosif. Manchego getting her own way. Perfect trip for plunge, blue chip, and he deuce pops right now and takes a shot. As Okis Fonstead senses that Manchego and Yannick Jingra trying to steal away. Manchego bracing now for plunge, blue chip on the outside, who takes her shot right now. And Thetosif's in gear. Third on the outside, and what a knockout. Gaps on the inside, picked off with Seve Yoram. To their outside, Hey Blondie trying to rally as they turn home. Manchego passing three quarters in 123 and two. In the stretch of the Hamiltonian Oaks, it's Manchego on the inside. Plunge, blue chip on the outside, pouring it on. 
Fate Tosev trying to rally and give her all. Manchego digging and needs the line. Here comes Fate Tosev trying to smith's hammer. Needs a final lunge, but it's Manchego. Manchego and Yannick Shingra! Manchego takes no prisoners, goes in a stakes and track record in 150. She's driven by Yannick Jingra and trained by Jimmy Tactor. And Yannick Jingra, Jimmy Tactor, they own this race, okay? For the past five years in a row, they have won the Hamiltonian Oaks. Amazing. And this is actually a really deep, impressive division, these three-year-old trotting fillies. We've mm -hmm. got Manchego, who is a superstar PA bred filly. We've got Fatosev. We've got Plunge Blue Chip. And then Atlanta, who beat the boys in the Hamiltonian. Jimmy Tactor says Manchego can beat Atlanta. There is going to be an explosive showdown, <laughs> yes, at the Breeders' Crown at the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono in October. We still have a lot more coming up on this week's show. We get up close and personal with what makes these horses go fast in 2018, the racing bike. We also stay right here at Harris, Philadelphia and show you the Pennsylvania Sire Stakes. It's coming right up. Lions, Nighthawks in front by a length. At Mohegan Sun Pocono, the colors shine a little brighter. The meals are just a little tastier and the slots a little hotter. When you're here with great friends, the good times seem to last a little longer. And you just may feel a little luckier. Best of all, it's all a little closer, so you can shine on anytime you like. Shine on, Mohegan Sun Pocono. The world is full of compromises, but not here. Not on this day, not in this race, not in this sport. Every bet is a hope. Return on investment comes in seconds. This is Harness Racing. We welcome you to the Harness Racing Fan Zone. See it all for yourself. Feel it in all the passion. Share that experience with others. The Harness Racing Fan Zone puts you in the driver's seat. Welcome back to PA Harness Week. We're going to stick right here with our race of the week at Harris, Philadelphia. We have four divisions of the PA Sire Stakes. Now, each race holds nearly a purse of $50,000. So there's a lot on the line for these horses. The first race you'll see, Captain Malicious is the favorite. This is race number two. Proof maintains the one length advantage. Pyro sets a tighter pocket second. Here comes Airman Trud. Driving up on the outside there, and Captain Malicious moves up with cover for three improving lengths from the front with less than three eighths of a mile to go. Roar of approvals at the inside fifth. Up on the outside, Actor Hanover's third up into the improving flow. Captain Coin is shuffled all the way back to seventh, and Cat Beach that has excess cover and ten lengths to come. Three quarters, 123 and four. Proof by a half. Airman Trud on the outside. Pyro Pyro zapped the pylons. Captain Malicious edges out three wide. Actor Hanover's right behind him. Roar of approval looks for room as they straighten the way. But Proof looks to sprint the way. Confidently handled. Up a length and a half. Pyro is second. Captain Malicious rallying on nicely. Airman Trot's trying to split rivals. Final 70. Proof is almost home. Scott Ciron, you just can't stop him. Proof wins this division, and he is proving to be a major force in Pennsylvania. Cyrus Stakes. he's trained by Brian Brown. He is the son of a rock and roll dance out of the champion Mayor Ginger and Fred wins this one in a lifetime best of 151 and 3 with Scott Zeron driving. And the next Pennsylvania Sire Stakes race features a very familiar horse and driver. This is race number nine. At odds on Boca Raton, drives out of third, now second as they round the turn. De Los Cielos Deo. Odds on Boca Raton with a serious challenge. Three quarters, 123 and four. Captain Victoria's Titans down in the pocket there in Volleyball Beach on the outside. Strong second over as they come to the top of the stretch. De Los Cielos Deo has the lead narrowly as they straighten away. Odds on Boca Raton trying to sustain that bid. Moving out widest is Volleyball Beach up the inside. Captain Victoria's De Los Cielos Deo. Outside odds on Boca Raton, but De Los Cielos Deo was toying with him. De Los Cielos Deos, which we've had on the show before. Very and, good. Oh, thank you. I mean, <laughs> what? Of course, I can always do that. <laughs> we struggled the first show. If you missed yeah. it, go back on our YouTube channel and you can check it out. But anyway, the horse's name does mean of heaven, and he is proving to be just unstoppable. Driven by Yannick Jingra. He's the son of Captain Treacherous. Trained by Ron Burke. Wins this one in 151-3. and three. And by the way, I want to talk about Ron Burke just for a moment. Huge milestone for Ron. 200th 
hundred million dollars in career earnings. He is the first trainer in harness racing history to achieve that. Wow, yes. pretty impressive. Well, the next race we have in the Pennsylvania Sire Stakes is the fastest one. It's race number 11, and again, it features a horse that we love on this show. They make the way towards the half, and a battle is ensuing. Uh, inside Lions Nighthawk, outside Air Force Hanover, so far with an unsuccessful brush. Semi tough is third, 54 and 3, 28 for that second quarter. Up the bank stretch to go, and now Air Force Hanover makes good on that extended brush. Takes over from Lions Nighthawk. Semi tough's given the right line, drives up now into third. Love me some Lou. Picks up that link, developing cover fourth. Bring the Thunders third up into the flow. Up on the outside, Cruise Captains around Warwe Unique, who drops out to last. And Semi tough takes the lead, being driven now by Shingra. Right behind him, Love Me Some Lou, 121 and 4. Big third quarter. Semi tough fans the lead. Love Me Some Lou on the outside. Air Force Sanover back to third. Bring the Thunders in between rivals. Out wide is Cruise Captain. They straighten away for the stretch drive. Semi tough. Love Me Some Lou picks up the chase, up to engage now. Semi tough digs in. Love Me Some Lou presses on. Semi tough. Love Me Some Lou on the outside. Love Me Some Lou. Semi tough down to the finish. Tight for a win. Love me some Lou wins in 150 and four it is the fastest of the evening for the PA Sire Stakes. Owned by John Cancellari, trained by his brother Tom and Corey Callahan, who we absolutely love on the show. We got to catch up with him about Love Me Some Lou. He's just got all the tools. I mean, he's he's got a lot of leg. He covers the ground easy. He's got a good mouth. Um, you know, the these Sweet Lou Colts, they. I really like them so far. I mean, with Sweet Lou and Captain Treacherous, uh, you know, they're really changing things around in Pennsylvania, and I think you're going to see even bigger miles than that. It's always great to catch up with Corey, and Corey happens to be driving the favorite Sugar Factory in the final of the PA Sire Stakes we're going to show you today. Midway around the final turn, Sugar Factory narrowly outside. Crimson and Chrome continues the grind. A flame head over awaits clearance. Escape to the beach about to come wide as they straighten the way. Sugar Factory hard pressed to keep this lean. Crimson and Chrome is grinding. A flame head over up the inside. On the far outside, it's Escape to the Beach, but it's Crimson and Chrome who's kicking forward. It's so amazing to see our future stars in Pennsylvania harness racing. I know, absolutely. I mean, this is another blazy mile. 151 and 4. These are two year old pacers. Like, I think back and I think, I would never have believed that horses would be going this fast in their freshman year, but they are. And in this race, we have Crimson and Chrome winning, trained by Jim King Jr. and driven to victory by Tim Tietrick. And Timmy is not only the reinsman on this horse, but also wears a couple other hats as owner and breeder. And I talked to Timmy about it. It's super great when you win with a horse you're driving, but you own the horse and you're the breeder? Yeah, just uh, I, I raced her, his mother, and uh, I think we gave like 2000 for her, and she she made us a couple hundred and we kept her and bred her and you know it's just it's, it's a great feeling to you know see something start out from the very beginning and then work out to be a nice racehorse. Yes the mom's name is Mixana so how do you decide to breed Mixana to Sweet Lou? <laughs> I, I just did I, I could have bred her to Captain I had two breedings to Captain but um, you know I'm a big believer in both those studs and I think they're they're very good for the sport both of them they've uh, represented themselves well in the breeding industry so far and I just took, kind of flipped a coin and went with Sweet Lou and hoping I got some white and I did get some white. Always love having top driver Tim Tietrick on the show and now we're going to switch gears to the racing bike. It's really evolved over the years. It used to be wooden and now of course it's not wooden. It's built out of some super duper dependable heavy material. <laughs> It's safe, and that's what you need to know. And of course, it's also built for speed. Driver Marcus Miller joins us for some Harness 411. Now, a lot of people call these things that we're standing next to chariots or, I don't know, carts, you know, but what are these? They're race bikes. They're not sulkies anymore. That's like the old school term, but they're definitely race bikes. Tell me about yours, because drivers all have different ones, correct? But it used to be back in the day, I believe, trainers had the race bikes. Now it's drivers? Yeah, they're they're so, like, fit to your yourself that now everybody wants their own because they're comfortable. If you're comfortable, you can make a quick decisions a lot easier. So you set it up so it's all, all ready for you, and most of them fit most horses. Have race bike will travel. Okay, now Marcus, tell me about yours. Here we go. And these weigh about 40 pounds. Something around there, yeah. So what's yours made out of? Uh, I believe this one is actually steel. Um, the wheels are plastic. They're they're uh, pretty hard though and safe. And 
and uh, this one is made in Canada. It's like kind of an all-purpose bike. It's not the fanciest one, but for every day, it's like a like a great all-purpose one. Now, going back to the wheels, I see here they were not always made that way. Correct? Yeah, uh, the new like like flat single piece is is pretty recent in like the past three or four years. They used to use spokes. Now they just kind of shrunk it all in. It's just one piece of plastic. They're really low maintenance. You, a couple bearings you change every now and then, but that's about it. Yeah, one of the things about not using the spokes is it's so much more safe to have a wheel like that and not the spokes. A horse could get their foot caught in it. One last question. How much does one of these babies put you back? <laughs> uh, just, it depends on on the model. I think this one's right around three thousand. The most expensive bike I ever bought when the UFO was brand new, I spent seven grand to get it shipped to Chicago. But it was like the, you had to have it, so that's what I did. But yeah, they've come down a little. They're a little more reasonable now, but but yeah, it's still not cheap. We have to take a quick break, but coming up, we head to the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono. And how do you know the horse you're betting on is the same horse that you see in the program? We'll tell you on the other side. I start by checking the tattoo number. That's 4N665. The excitement is back. Breeders' crown. America's $6 million championships return to the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono where racing's greatest champions are crowned on one unforgettable night. And a brand new chapter in racing history is written. Breeders' Crown, Saturday, October 27th. The journey, the pursuit of greatness, all comes down to this. This message is brought to you by the more than 23,000 folks all across the Commonwealth, your friends, your neighbors, who proudly earn their living in Pennsylvania's horse racing and breeding industries. Each year, horse racing provides well over $4 billion in economic impact statewide, and horse racing is directly responsible for jobs, tens of thousands of solid, good-paying jobs in Erie, Harrisburg, Philadelphia, everywhere you look. Horse racing in Pennsylvania, it's a winner. Welcome back. You're watching PA Harness Week. We now head to the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono for the Great Northeast Open Series. We're going to start with race 10. It carries with it a purse of $30,000, and the favorite in this one is Better's Edge. Rodeo Romeo pushing back the charge of Rock Eyed Optimus. Feeling Cam Lucky three wide. Inside Hylator is a length and three quarters away. Top of the stretch, Rodeo Romeo trying to seal the deal. George Knapp now calling on him. Inside Better's Edge is shooting through for Morrill. Outside Hylator coming on again and it's Hylator. Hylator trained by Jenny Beer wins in 151 and 1. This is his 20th career win which seems like okay uh, kind of <laughs> cool right out of 42 lifetime starts. That is amazing. Driver Eric Carlson is in the driver's seat. Finishing second is your two million dollar winner Better's Edge who came up the passing lane and Rodeo Romeo finished third. Now there are three divisions of the two year old Philly Pacers in the PA Sire Stakes. The first is race number four and the favorite is Treacherous Rain. Sylph Hanover on top, two to three quarter pole, 122 and three, 27 and two. Third panel, fraction zippy all the way around. Sylph Hanover trying to hold up under that burden. Treacherous rain just a length and a quarter back. Further back, Stonebridge Soul and then Sweeter Lulu. Top of the stretch, Sylph Hanover by a length and a half. All out on the outside, treacherous rain now coming on here. Sylph Hanover still there, treacherous rain coming up just a head away. Treacherous rain on the outside for Andrew McCarthy. We're kicking off the two-year-old Sire Stakes Philly action with the fastest. It's Treacherous Rain winning in 151 and 1 with Andrew McCarthy driving. Tony Alanya trains the daughter of Captain Treacherous, who was trained by Tony Alanya, <laughs> if you got that. <laughs> anyway, um, she not only scores impressively, but uh, it sets a seasonal best on a 5 8 mile track for her division. And we have some more outstanding two-year-old Philly Pacers to show you right from Pocono. This is race number five. And now Blue Ivy trying to move on. She's all right. Three quarters, 125 and two. Much faster on the back, 27 and one. She's all right. And Blue Ivy are hooked up here. Length and a half back now to Sweet Lucy Lou getting the trip. And she's all right. Goes off stride. Blue Ivy inherits the lead at the top of the stretch here by two. Sweet uh, Rock and Philly on the outside with momentum. Zips right on past Tim Tietrich and 
and Rock and Philly going to leave this field behind now. The one to five favorite, she's all right, has been so good this year, but then goes off stride, and everyone else is like, well, that's all right with us, <laughs> including Rock and Philly, who wins in 153 and two. She is the daughter of Rock and Roll Hanover, trained by Jim King Jr. with Tim Tietrich in the bike. Sweet Lucy Lou was second, and Blue Ivy was third. Beyonce was fourth, Jay-Z was fifth. Did you get that right. joke? I got what she yeah, just did right. there. <laughs> <laughs> now it's on to race number 10. And the favorite in this one, well, it's quite the tongue twister. Mm -hmm. Heather? Rory Ubut. Now you got me to it. Rory Ubut. I got it one. that time. That's Second time's one. a charm. It's the favorite. That's all you need to know. Rory Ubut, three quarters, 124 and three, 28 and one, third panel. Rory Ubut, Jingran not asking for much. Bestseller Hanover is lurking in the pocket. Inside third now, Izzy Hanover as Sweet Chrome drops back fourth. Top of the stretch showdown now as Rory Ubut has the lead. Bestseller Hanover pops the pocket now, just a length back, but Rory Ubut holds holding steady to that advantage. Warwari U Butte going to win the showdown of unbeaten Phillies. Warwari U Butte makes the lead going by the half and stays there. She wins in 152 and 1. She is a daughter of Sweet Lou, trained by Ron Burke and driven to victory by Yannick Jingra. And she is definitely going to be a force in these PA Cyrus Stakes this year. So I'm really, really excited about watching her. Now, how do we know it's actually Warari U-Butte that won, yeah. right? I know. <laughs> Aren't you asking the same thing? Well, actually, there is an identifier in the paddock, and they make sure that each horse on the track is the same one that you're looking at in your racing program. It's a very important job, and we found out more. Hi, I'm Peggy Seaman, identifier here at Harris Chester. I've been here since we opened in 2006. My job's important because I make sure the proper horse is in the stall before the race. I start by checking the tattoo number, that's 4N665, I check it against my sheet. Now I move on to my equipment, I make sure I have the right equipment that he raced in his last start. I start with the blind bridle, we have a snaffle bit and a mini bit under check. I have two head poles, I have burr head pole inside and we just changed to a line pole on the outside. I also have knee boots tendon boots, tongue tie, tail tie, earplugs, full spread shoes up front and aluminum shoes on behind. I now check for my hobbles, make sure my hobble lengths are correct. I do this with every horse and every race. That's really interesting and very important to our sport. And speaking of important, it's really important that you know the live racing schedule for this week. The Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono has exciting live harness racing Saturday through Tuesdays. Each evening, the post time is at 7 p.m. And at Harris, Philadelphia, there is Sunday racing with a post time of 12.40. Then on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, the first race post time is at 12.25. So we like to make you think every Saturday morning. So Heather has a little brain twister for you. I do. Six children and six horses stood under one umbrella and none of them got wet. How could this happen? It's a great question. Think about it for a few minutes. We're going to tell you the answer on the flip side. Also, Heather will tell you the story of dial or no dial. And of course, we'll tell you what's trending. Here comes the million dollar pacer dial and no dial out widest. At Mohegan Sun Pocono, the colors shine a little brighter. The meals are just a little tastier and the slots a little hotter. When you're here with great friends, the good times seem to last a little longer and you just may feel a little luckier. Best of all, it's all a little closer so you can shine on anytime you like. Shine on Mohegan Sun Pocono. It's Mac Lobel, and he's pouring it on. It's Niatros by four, and he's going away. The Harness Racing Museum and Hall of Fame, a place where heroes come to life, preserving harness racing's treasured past while promoting its exciting future. And now get ready to harness your excitement with the thrill of Harness Racing's 3D Simulator. The Harness Racing Museum and Hall of Fame, now offering free admission. Bigger, better, bolder than ever. 
The Harness Horse Youth Foundation, changing lives since 1976 by providing unforgettable experiences while educating young racing fans. The Harness Horse Youth Foundation, hands-on equine learning at camps across the country and driving exhibitions. The Harness Horse Youth Foundation, providing scholarships, leadership programs, career and college information. Support the Harness Horse Youth Foundation. Log on to hhyf.org and find us on Facebook. The Harness Horse Youth Foundation, growing our future with enthusiasm. Welcome back to PA Harness Week. Before the break, we gave you a little brain twister, and now we'll give you the answer. Okay, so the question was, six children and six horses are standing under one umbrella. None of the, them got wet. How could this happen? It's because it wasn't raining. There you go. There you go. <laughs> tell right. that one to the grandkids. <laughs> so I have to tell you about this horse okay. that I absolutely love. His name is Dial or No Dial. Oh, wait a minute. I feel an OMG coming on. Yes, I have my own personal OMG this week. So there's this horse named Dial or No Dial, and I have followed this horse racing for years, only because I love the name so much. There's so much you can do with it. Dial or No Dial, is it the soap? Is it a TV dial? Is it something you do and think about? Dial or No Dial, all my exes after the, you go home at two o'clock in the morning. So many things with this Dial or No Dial. Anyway, I'm so excited. He is 12 years old. He just won here at Harris, Philadelphia recently in 152 and 2. So happy this gutsy veteran pacer is still going strong. It's now time for a little segment called What's Trending. Now, we all wish our horses could live forever. Well, one horse defied the odds and lived longer than most humans. 51 years old. Yes, you hear about horses that are living into their 30s, even into their 40s. But when I looked at Horse Spirit Facebook page, I found out about the oldest horse in the world. His name is Shane. Now, he did pass away. However, like you said, 51 years old. That's like 120 in human years. Uh, now, Shane lived in England and basically hung out and visited with people. And now he's in that big pasture in the sky. Moving on to something a little more cheery, we've got Dolly and Spanky, a really fun Instagram account here. Dally is the dog, Spanky is the horse, both rescues, they bonded, and now Dally and Spanky are BFFs. Dally just rides Spanky all day. It is internet magic. They have a book on Amazon, Briar Models, total social media superstars who just happen to have four legs. And speaking of social media, we want you to keep up with us on social media. You can always go to harnessweek.com. You can also find us on Facebook, of course, at Harness Week, and we're always on Twitter at PA Harness Week. It has been another great show. We've loved having you for this half hour. Please tune in every Saturday morning, 1030 on NBC Sports Philadelphia for another episode of PA Harness Week.